Hello, welcome to Psychopath in Your Life. My name is Diane Emerson. I'm the author of the book Psychopaths in Our Lives, My Interviews. My book is available on psychopathinyourlife.com. You can download a free e-copy there. It's about 300 pages and it'll tell you all you need to know to figure out if you have any psychopaths in your life. If you think you don't, well, good luck on that one because I find them rattling around all over the place, so we're pretty well surrounded here. I'm working on a show now that I'll get to in the next couple of weeks, so I'm just taking a break from that to try to explain how we got so surrounded by psychopaths. And really, the more people stare at those devices versus looking around, the worse it's becoming. So caution to the public, okay? We're entering into some very, very dangerous times here. So none of this is going to be funny and none of it's really going to work out well. So I have a whole body of work over on YouTube, same name, Psychopath in Your Life, that I have not been able to upload to audio for obvious reasons because of the graphics. You might want to pay attention to my show there as far as the goats and the sheep. As a matter of fact, I'm a sheep. They've even turned that word into a bad thing. So go over there and look because all of this, people talk about the New World Order in some abstract way. Well, the New World Order is essentially the United Nations. And it has a many, many, many branches that cover just about everything, including our friends at the IMF who set the rates for money. And if you think that the money is backed by anything, you'd be mistaken. It is backed by the goodwill of the psychos in charge. So anyways, be careful out there because banks will eventually probably not be quite safe and the dollar is going to plummet. So I believe, and this is my opinion, that I've been saying this for almost a year now, that this country is in the crosshairs right now. They're going to be robbing <clears throat> the rest of the country. So... I would be very cautious of interactions with banks. I don't know how well you're going to eat Bitcoin or gold. You know, money is coming due. People, are, I guess we're going to get money in a few weeks or whatever. Money is coming due, so the sharks are swimming the water trying to get you invested in Bitcoin. Well, if you think you're going to follow Warren Buffett's advice and get into Bitcoin, good luck. Good luck with that one. So anyways, and I've done a whole body of work, so just take a look at that. I'm not going to get into it right now. Okay, so... What I find interesting is, um, I want to tell you what I know so far, as far as there's a couple of things here. One is about Texas, and the other is about what's going on in Texas, and how that will rack up possibly for the future. Because one thing to consider is that after all of this massive snowing and stuff in Texas, there will likely be floods. Why would I say this? Well, I'm not a meteorologist. I'm making a best case judgment, okay? And I'll put links to all of this. So look for yourself. Nebraska had some floods in March of 2019 after the snow. They hit some sort of cyclone event. Well, massive, massive. And all these, all these weather incidents, they always talk about unprecedented, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, it has been because... The reality is true. After the snow will come floods. So anyway, so let's talk a little bit about Texas here. It's the only state that in the lower 48 with its own electrical grid called ERCOT, E-R-C-O-T. And there's only two other grids, the Eastern Intercontinental and the Western in Intercontinental. So what's interesting about Texas, because after these major disasters, my first interest is, well, what does that state raise? And how is that going to affect produce in the markets and all, market share and stuff? Well, Texas, as it turns out, is the second largest state in terms of land mass, trailing behind Alaska, which is where this weather stuff is coming from. So I will be talking about Alaska here in a bit. And it's second in population as well behind California. And Texas also trails behind California in terms of annual GDP. So see, do you notice some patterns here? First, they got California. Lots of fires still going on in California. So we've got, you know, people. a lot of people in California, their working class are losing their housing and stuff. So a lot of things are going to be able to get snapped up at, you know, less than zero interest rates by the elite. So California, now we got Texas, right? Well, what is Texas good for as far as what, what do they raise? Well, Texas produces about 20% of the nation's beef cattle and ranks number one in the country in the value of ca cattle raised. Other important livestock products include broilers, those are the young chickens, dairy products, followed by chicken eggs and hogs, sheep and lambs, and turkeys are also, also commercially raised in Texas. 
Texas produces a wide variety of crops led in order by cotton, corn, hay, sorghum, winter wheat, and fresh vegetables. And there's also a healthy pecan and peanut crop industry in Texas. So now you know what is raised in Texas. So um, all these links will be below as far as there was a, I was looking at into the weather and I found a link oh, a long time ago and it was the U.S. Senate meeting talking about weather change. And well, I can't find, I found the link, but they did like the most horrible edit job where they clipped out the part that people have questioned as far as this heart program. And I'll get to that right here. So look for yourself and you can see how sloppy the edit job was. So anyway, so while I was over looking up for information, one of the search engines I use is the Russian one. And because they don't scrub as much as as quickly as the one in this country does. And that is Yandex, Y-A-N-D-E-X dot com. Matter of fact, I'm there so much some days they stop me to make sure I'm not a, a bot or something. So anyway, so while I was over there, there was an interesting article from a Russian scholar. He warns of secret U.S. climate change weapons. Interesting, huh? And of course, he had a change of heart and said, oh, I didn't really mean to say that. <laughs> so anyway, so the the... the the video was added to specifically exclude the explanation of HARP's purchase, purpose, which I'll talk about here. So what is HARP? High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. It's HARP. It's a 240 mile drive from Fairbanks and roughly 198 miles from Anchorage up in Alaska. Um, the first article I could find talking about Alaska was a comment, a quote by a General Billy Mitchell. General Billy Mitchell was considered the father of the Air Force. He was a pretty high-ranking dude, right? And he testified in Congress in 1935. And he was talking about, and this was his quote, one of my top priorities is ensuring the Arctic region is a national priority. The Air Force's first ever Arctic strategy not only recognizes the importance of the Arctic, but emphasizes Alaska's essential role in projecting national power and protecting our homeland. Okay, so Alaska's kind of an interesting place, right? And you could look up Billy, General Billy Mitchell. He was demoted before, I don't know, anyways, look him up. There was a movie done about him starring Gary Cooper, so he's kind of an interesting character. So anyway, so he... He went on to say, in the future, whoever controls Alaska controls the world. I th this is him. I think it is the most strategic place in the world. So, America's central, Af Alaska's central role to America's Arctic, Arctic strategy is vital. So back in 35, this General Billy guy was talking about Alaska. I never really thought much about Alaska before all this, actually. I knew Harp was there, but I never really knew about all this other stuff. So anyway, so then I found another interesting quote about from the, in 1997, by former U.S. Defense Secretary William Cohen, C-O-H-E-N. And he said, and this is his quote, this is a really a good one, others, terrorists, <laughs> well, I guess they are excluding this country, right? That's always the other people that are the terrorists, right? Are engaging, if you think, if you wonder why I'm saying this, check out my shows about the military that I've got on YouTube. So anyway, so... They're engaging even in an echo type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate. He's talking about other people here. They can set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. So there are plenty of ingenious minds out there that are at work finding ways to which we could, they could wreak havoc and terror upon other nations. It's real, and that's the reason why we have to intensify our counterterrorism efforts. Interesting quote, isn't it? So, it, it, remember I always say this, evil always has to come packaged and help. So here, this is all being positioned that it's the other guys that are possibly doing this stuff, when it appears to me that they're the ones doing it up there in Alaska, but you need to think for yourself. We got eyes and ears for a purpose here, okay? So, the High Frequency Active Oral Research Program was initiated as a ionospheric research program jointly funded by the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Navy, and I think the Uni University of Alaska Fairbanks is now in control of it all. 
and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency called DARPA, D-A-R-P-A. It was designed and built by BAE Advanced Technologies. Its original purpose was to analyze the ionosphere. I'm not a scientist. You have to excuse my pronunciation. It was its original purpose was to analyze the ionosphere and investigate the potential for developing ionospheric enhancement technology for radio communications and surveillance. Hmm. HARP is a high power, high frequency transmitter used for the study of the ionosphere. They're talking about studying it, not really that they're using it, right? It's all in the words, right? <clears throat> it was built by a cost of close to 300 million. Work at the HARP facility began in 1993 in Gakona, G-A-K-O-N-A, Alaska. The, it was completed in 2007. The site has 180, and I'll have pictures of this on the screen. The site has 180 antennas on 30 acres. Always oh, those numbers three, right? <clears throat> that are used to direct energy into the ionosphere. So, it's 55 miles and 370 miles above the Earth. Pretty high up there, but not that high up, right? And monitor changes in the flow of charged particles. How did this get started? Well, it got started by a Senator, Ted Stevens. I think he's dead, <clears throat> sorry to say, or sad to say, happy to say, <laughs> you decide. Um, he served as a U.S. Senator in Alaska from 1968 to 2009, the second lar longest running senator in this country. And he's considered by the U.S. Air Force as the godfather of HARP because he helped start it two decades ago with annual earmarks slipped into the defense budget. You do realize this is all your tax dollars, correct? We spend over 50% of our tax dollars on war, so who knows? And remember, we only know what we're told. In the show that I did about 9-11, um, well, you know, there were trillions missing from the Treasury, and then 9-11 hit two days later, subject gets dropped. I mean, there's all these things where trillions get missing here and there, okay? So, anyway, so... HARP was dismantled after the final experiment in June of 2014. So, there was a Senate hearing, and the U.S. Air Force gave official testimony to notice to Congress saying that it intends to dismantle it, and they were going to, um, they were, then they were having a discussion. So, there was a, questions from, there's a senator in Can uh, Kansas, <laughs> Alaska, named Lisa Murkowski. Hey, remember that name? She was asking questions, and the respondent was a man named David Walker. And this is where we get to where they slipped up and included things that they wanted to go back and edit out. Now, did they place that on purpose to trick all of us and then trick us more by editing out? I don't really know. I've never been employed by the CIA, so I really can't help you there. But anyway, so let me keep telling the story here as it went. So this David Walker guy... He's pretty high up. He's the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Science, Technology, and Engineering. Well, I guess at the time, whatever. And he said, this is not an area that we have any need for in the future because they're talking about closing down HARP. And it would not be a good use of Air Force research funds to keep HARP going. Okay. We've moved on to other ways of managing the ionosphere. Pay attention here, which the HARP was really designed to do. They've moved on to other areas. That's kind of an admission to me, right? What other areas? I have one that I will talk about that you can help me look a little bit further into. But anyway, so he says, the other areas to inject energy into the ionosphere to be able to actually control it. But that work has been completed. So he's saying that HARP was to insert this stuff in the ionosphere, but that work's been completed. So he's admitting that they've been injecting energy into the air, right? And so comments like that have really risen to endless conspiracies. Let me get my tinfoil hat out here for this part of the story. Get, get my hat adjusted here. Okay, so he said, my hat's on. <laughs> Call me a conspiracy theorist right now. Okay, so he said comments like they've given rise to conspiracies and portraying HARP as a super we weapon capable of mind control or weather control with enough juice to trigger hurricanes, tornadoes, and earthquakes. Are they conspiracies? I don't know. I kind of believe it myself, but 
you take a thought for yourself and crank up your own search and just don't look for yourself. So anyway, so he makes his comment. And so the facility's 180 high frequency antennas spread across 33 acres and they're they just did a tour to show these acres and all these things because what they decided to do was do a tour of the facility they, they tore it down you know a couple and i just said the 90s they took it down and so now they're doing tours of the facility why are they doing tours kind of an odd place to go look at right well they decided to do these tours including like a petting zoo <laughs> to, to be able to show to people to let them see that this none of this stuff is true so let's come toward the facility and I, I don't know how that adds up right i don't know how looking at all these wires and stuff leads you to believe that they didn't really plan any of this stuff but that, that's what they're saying so we'll stick with what the storyline is here okay so the alaska dispatch news described it as a one of the world's few centers for high power and high frequency study ionosphere so they see it was important because radio waves used for communication and navigation reflect back onto Earth, allowing long distance short wave. Okay, so um, they had the open house and they said that they wanted people to see it because they want us to believe that it's not for mind control or weather. I never thought it was for mind control. So, anyway, so he said that um, it's not capable of mind control. And it's, they've been accused of that. So they're trying to dispel these accusations. Well, I'm one of the people that's accusing them now. Okay, so that's why I have my 10 cap on right now. So so many believe that. Now, you, you'll start to see the word harp, harp around. And you'll know that we're not talking about the instrument that angels play in heaven, right? More the evil folks are playing the harp thing. So is this just a conspiracy theory? It, but is it really a conspiracy theory if in that statement they have in fact admitted that it's true? I don't know. You've got to decide that. Is HARP still active? Well, they closed down all those materials and stuff, all, the facility up in, you know, th in Alaska. Now they're doing tours of it and stuff and showing and the petting zoo and stuff. So, no, it's obviously not still active there. But what's going on? I don't know. The closest thing I have found is that the United States Air Force wants to do this more efficiently with tiny satellites. They're called CubeSats, C-U-B-E-S-A-T-S. It's called Cube Satellites. They carry large volumes of ionized gas directly into the ionosphere. So they would have been doing this CubeSat stuff for years, but I can't confirm this right now because it's probably secret. The U United States Air Force wants says it wants to smooth out the effects of solar wind which could knock out gps and also investigate the possibility of blocking communication from enemy satellites so i don't know you're going to have to decide for yourself is, is the weather radical change in the weather on purpose my view is of course it is but you would have to see and you have to think about this stuff because remember they said for a long time that there was no facial recognition in this country, okay? And then for a while they said, oh, yeah, we have it, but oh, my bad, we're not going to be using it anymore. Well, who are you going to believe, right? Remember, people have been rushing to buy those ring doorbells, and those ring doorbells are cameras, and they said, well, they're just to track the packages on your porch. Those ring doorbells really got sold because they put some articles in the news about people getting packages stolen off their porches so there was a rush to buy ring doorbells well I hate to tell you but those ring doorbells are now hooked up to the cops so with the a1 saying that they're not going to be using it well um they were using a a1 to um, intelligence to figure out the people in the capital um, incident recently now those were their people was that a story i don't know but they do already have a one i've shown you in the past that i can go on right now and buy one of those systems on for recognition to get people in my door right now on amazon so don't be fooled they're trying to direct us to look at china but really all of this stuff is already available here okay and also the military rarely i would doubt they decommission things without having a faster better more effective replacement but let me tell you what the scientists think the um 
mainstream media and the government all have come out and clearly said that harp is not really what we think it is it's, it has nothing to do with the weather and it's just a massive conspiracy so let me close you with the scientists have to say now remember i don't trust scientists i don't trust any of the government so this is from my own viewpoint okay but this is their direct quote scientists say all of this is nonsense and that the degree of ionosphere control possible through HARP is akin to controlling the Pacific Ocean by tossing a rock into it. Well, there you go. I'm going to get back to work here. Um, be safe out there. I'll chat with you in the comments and let me know what you think. Do you think the government's controlling the weather? <laughs> well, you know, go over and look on the index and see for yourself. So be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye for now.